Awesome. All right, since we are um, moving in time, let me just get into the session. Uh, hopefully, as we go on, uh, people will engage more and be able to give them uh, feedback. So tonight, uh, we would like to know what uh, we're going to do. We can see this lady is going to deliver us a package tonight. Uh, so this is what we'll look at tonight. We're going to look into a bit about technopreneurship and the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, this is going to help us be able to understand what this is, why it's present, and why we need to know about it. And this is a very important, a very important topic that you do not want to be operating as an entrepreneur without knowledge in. The second is why the fourth industrial revolution is different from the third. You know, I get uh, people asking this, and I also ask this at some point to say that, okay, how do I know where the, the line is, that thin line is between the third industrial revolution, which was the digital revolution where we got the semiconductor, the PC, which is the personal computer come in, you know, and how do you tell when the internet was from the third industrial revolution? So now how do you tell that line? How do you tell the difference that in between that uh, third industrial revolution and what is being termed as the fourth industrial revolution? Uh, why we need to embrace the fourth industrial revolution as technopreneurs? Okay, so we're going to look at why this should be relevant and I'm going to be able to speak certain things on the slides and certain things that are not on the slides and that's why you're going to need to be able to uh, re-listen to this. Those of you who are part of the Entrepreneurs group, you have the recording coming through as well. Uh, you also can take time to take notes on why we need to embrace the fourth industrial revolution as technopreneurs. And I'm going to come close to Zambia as well and deal with some really, really major insights that we can begin to brainstorm around. Fourth industrial revolution technologies. So I'm gonna go through a number of technologies that have become inherent or have become precedent uh, in this particular revolution that the world is undertaking. So if that sounds great to you and this is what you came here for, go ahead and right now hit the chat box and say, yes, let's get started. So if that's what you want, let me get some uh, feedbacks and say, yes, let's get started. Let me get some ready. I see medical that uh, Chimba uh, put in, great. Yes, let's get started, thanks from Tishimba. Let's get more, yes, from Mondoka. Aaron, let me get more, yes, we can get started from Shipra, thank you so much. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, I'm getting more feedback as well. Tisa, thank you. All right, so let's get started tonight. So to get started, a bit about technopreneurship. What is this technopreneurship? Why should we even be thinking about it today? So the simple and straightforward definition of technopreneurship is this. It's the use of technology as an integral and key part in the transformation of goods and services. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to read that again. It's the use of technology as an integral and key part in the transformation of goods and services. So we're essentially saying that this technopreneurship is how we are able to essentialize, okay, the use of technology in our everyday transformation of those goods and services, in our operations as business people, in our operations as people that are engaged in a marketplace. So whether it's an on-demand market, whether it's the business to business market, the business to customer consumer market, there is an integration, that operation of technology that comes in. So when you begin to use technology as an entrepreneur, for example, when we look at the word transformation and you begin to transform how you, uh, whether it's distribute your goods and services or how you package your goods and services, uh, so, for example, if you're talking about distribution, you use technology to be able to put up the value chains, the distribution channels, instead of you being able to have customers come to your retail outlet, they're receiving their, their particular purchases at their door, okay? They have, they have delivery, home delivery systems that come into place. Uh, if, if you get to use, for example, technologies for them to buy and then you get to have that translated to your courier services and that goes on. Or if you're being advanced like what Western worlds have, 
you find there's certain um, uh, particular delivery services such as pizza that is being done by drones. Some of those are air drones, uh, which we all know as unmanned vehicles. And some of those drones are rovers that will literally drive to a person's place. So this consistent involvement of technology in the transformation of goods and services is beginning to play a very essential uh, part in our everyday uh, activities as entrepreneurs. And that being the case, uh, okay, just allow me to uh, let me just take that. Uh, let me just take that from you for now, and then I'll be able to return it to you as 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 we go on, so we don't have any disturbances. All right, that's better. So let's uh, make some progress. So simply put, technology plus entrepreneurship makes technopreneurship. Have any one of you ever used technology in business? I, I saw a lot of people typing internet, internet, internet. So yes, are you currently, or let me put it this way, are you currently using technology in your business, in your selling of goods and services? Let me just see uh, some uh, feedback in the chat box. Are you currently doing that? Yes, from Tisa, thank you. Um, are we doing any form of technology right now? Are you using online platforms, applications? Are you currently using the internet to spread word about your business? Yes, from Aaron Great. Maybe you have a website that sells. That's from Chishimba, thank you so much. It's great to see that we're already seeing um, technology. What about your smartphones? Don't you make calls on them? Don't you use WhatsApp? I believe every person at this point in time, one way or another, technology is being utilized. Uh, whether you're sending emails, you're using technology, if you've got an email list, you're into email marketing, that's all technology if you're into uh, any form of drop shipping that's technology. If you use your car, <laughs> your car to actually get involved in business, that's technology because cars came in in the second industrial revolution. Those are the technologies of the second industrial revolution when the internal combustion engine was developed. And we see the people like the Henry Fords that were able to transition people to now use of motor cars, automobiles, or also automobiles to actually travel. And I like a quote by him. He says that if I asked the people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. So instead, he went and did what he felt they needed and then produced the internal combustion engine. And today we see how we are greatly benefiting from such innovation in technology. Um, before I go ahead of ourselves, let me move to the next slide so that we build context around what we're dealing with tonight. I don't want to lose any person. So now, let's get to understand a bit about the fourth industrial revolution. I apologize for that. Um, so about the fourth industrial revolution. So now, it is the technological revolution that is blurring the lines between the physical digital and biological spheres. I'm gonna allow that to sink in just for a while and for you to be able to internalize this. I'm not gonna dwell on this. This was a term that was first coined by Klaus Schwab, okay? And Klaus Schwab was the founder of the World Economic Forum. And he, get, he made this statement in the year 2016. Uh, at the World Economic Forum. And that's when he first introduced the term fourth industrial revolution. And he says, he's termed it as this technological revolution, this revolution that's happening in the technological lines. That is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. What he meant by this is that each and every day, we as people are using more and more of technology that it's beginning to be difficult to distinguish between uh, how technology is away from human beings. I mean, today is uh, heart 
rate um, check machines today. Today we are using our phones more often than before. We've got voice activated machinery. Uh, our phones themselves can use voice activation. We've got face detection, uh, this face detection technologies. In almost all the operations that human beings today are using, technology is blurring the line. I mean, today you can get uh, a, a pacer, a pacemaker for your heart. That is technology, and it can help your blood pump blood to the vessel. The line is the lines are being blurred. Biological and digital uh, lines are being blurred. Uh, we're looking at how people can have hearing aids today that help them hear, and these are technological uh, innovations. And we see this all in mood. If we go to shop today. We see how things like the internet of things have become more relevant. People are able to shop uh, with just technology. Uh, people are, uh, there's a certain time when we were in our idea capital development business conference last year in 2019, I shared on what Amazon Go is doing in the world. They have a store that you can go to and you don't have to pass through the counter to actually buy stuff. Like as you are picking things from the, the, the particular shelves. Your phone is connected to your credit card and it's been able to use uh, deep learning algorithms to be able to uh, take note of everything you pick off the shelf. And if you put it back, it cancels it off your grocery list. And you can walk into that shop and just walk out without meeting a tailor. Your monies will be cashed out of your bank automatically. That's like how far things are going. Imagine the teller has been replaced in Amazon Go shops. People walk in, walk out, and they buy stuff. All they do is pick stuff and go. That's how you can look it up on YouTube and you'll be amazed at the technologies that are there. And that's what this is about. More and more uh, things are being done that are blurring those lines. You talk about 3D printing. Today, there's 3D printing such that you can print a hip bone for a surgery and it can, be, it can be used to replace the actual bone in the biological persons. Like, there's so much people can do with 3D printing. I was seeing the other day, there are robots that can print houses brick by brick. In two days, an entire home is built because those lines are being blurred what machineries in technological forms are doing today and the physical integration with biolog uh, biological beings is more and more thin fading off and that's what the fourth industrial revolution is and obviously there have been concerns about this concerns on security on privacy uh, you know concerns about how this is causing inadequacy but i'm going to get into more of that so let me just move on a bit more. This is a brief history about the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and you get to see that the first industrial revolution happened in the 1760s. That's when the steam engines were uh, discovered. And this was done in Great Britain at the time where they began to use machines in their everyday uh, activities in terms of industrialization. So be, that's when factories became a thing. The use of steam engines, burning coal, uh, was a thing of, of that particular time. And if you go to, you know, if those have done some engineering, you got to see how there's the use of gears to be able to make industrial equipment operate for long hours than human beings were able to do that. And this was the first industrial revolution. After that came the second industrial revolution that happened in the 1870s. You know, this is a mass industry scale just went to the next level. Talk about the John D. Rockefellers, the, 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 the people that came in and you're going to see how they were thinking in these lines. Uh, the steel, the oil and the electricity uh, came in. That's when people were able to know how they cut a particular cathode ray tubes were working and they was using ions to be able to create all this within an ionic, um, an ionic uh, solution to create electricity. Talking about the batteries, 
It happened in the 1870s. Uh, and this led to inventions by Thomas Edison. We talked about the light bulb. And today we are just reaping the benefits of that revolution. Today, right now, we've got electricity in our homes. We're able to enjoy power. And with renewable energies, we're able now to even see how solar can help to power homes with electricity today. And then after that, about a decade again, came the third industrial revolution when the semiconductors were invented. These are found in our personal computers today. Uh, this, this, this was a next level uh, of innovation in technology. The personal computers came in. IBM uh, had done the computer at the time. And you know, Bill Gates came with his pursuit to get into personal computers, uh, putting the stuff like the windows on the personal computers. We have people like the Steve Jobs that began to design Apple uh, and they began to also run around with the Mac S systems. Uh, and we see how that has grown. And then came the internet, starting from just being something that was so basic, the DOS, the, and it began to grow from that. It began to get more complex uh, all the way from a local area network, which just means that uh, you connected within a local space to now what is known as a wide area network. Uh, that can extend beyond networks, then to the World Wide Web now, where almost everything is interconnected. There's a term that is known as an extra byte. Okay, there's gigabyte, kilobytes, you know, there's megabytes. But there's a term known as an extra byte. An extra byte is a huge number. This is 10 to the power 18. Now, an extra byte is a huge amount of information. And there's a particular library known as the Library of Congress in the States that is known to be able to hold a written knowledge of about an extra byte plus. But do you know that within a year, sometimes we produce about over 1,100 extra bytes in knowledge on the internet? And I saw this, I was doing some research and I was amazed at this. Now, can you imagine there's so much knowledge on the internet and guess what? You have access over 1,100 plus in extra byte information. And one key speaker asked the question to say, is knowledge power truly is it power today because you and i right now can have access to that information within seconds i mean there's literally almost all things that there's literally nothing you can actually not ask on the net and not get answers to the platform like cora that consistently have people that are asking questions and people are feeding giving feedback i visit cora quite often there's pin interest you can get different design uh, that people putting up different ideas that are there. There's so many platforms. The largest search engine known as Google. People have been given terms like Uncle Google and whatnot. And guess what? We have access to that knowledge. And then there's a post to say, is knowledge really power now? So now with these three revolutions that have come and you see how much impact they've already had on the world today. Guess what? There is a fourth industrial revolution. It is real and it is present today. With all these functionalities that we already have, this fourth industrial revolution is now here. And if we have already been benefiting from the internet, from smartphones that were, were brought forth during the times uh, when we, we were able to see the semiconductors coming in, you know, we saw that with Steve Jobs being able to come up with the idea of a smartphone and how you can enter, you can create an ecosystem on your phone of different stuff. It began to make certain applications like tele, like telefax and, and post offices began to lose money from that because people could now have a lot of functionality on their phone. They could do all that and they began to play so that within a smart ecosystem on the phone, messaging, you know, and all that came up. And with all that taking place, then there's this fourth revolution. So we want to now ask the question, why the fourth industrial revolution is different from the third? I mean, like I said, it is harder to see the lines. Like where are these lines? Where is the difference that's taking place? 
and and I want to be able to just pause my screen for a moment here because that's a real question that we need to ask ourselves. So I've shared with you uh, a number of ideas just right now, I've been able to share with you how you're seeing this as a relevant change that's taking place. Now, as we dig into small, I want to be able to see people's mindset around this. Do we feel there's that line, that difference that exists at the moment? Do we feel it's in existence? How many of us feel there's a difference? Or how many of us are as confused as I've been before about this to say, okay, but where and how do I get to know what the industrial report, the industrial revolution is about? Am I the only person who has been confused about it? Or you've also asked yourself the question to say, what is this in fourth industrial revolution? Let me get some feedback. Am I the only person that's been asking this question? Chishimba says, very confused. Thank you, Chishimba, for that feedback. Those of you who are not commenting, uh, maybe you can share with us as to how this has been something that's been clear for you, perhaps. You know? <laughs> Has this been a confusing thing? I, I mean, if you heard, just let's just get some feedback. Has this been a confusing thing for you as well? When you've heard fourth industrial revolution, what's come to your mind? Or maybe it's been clear. So let me get clear or confused in the group. Great okay, to see Tisa saying, my brain is true processing. Yes, it is confusing. Thank you for that feedback. I'm glad to know I'm not the only one that this has confused before. Aaron says as well, confused. Thank you so much. It's it's great that we're connecting, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to see some feedback from Mr. Hezron, from Shipra, from Yami Kani. Uh, where are we at this? Is it clear for you? Is it a bit confusing? Can we do this thing together? So Aaron asked Yami Kani to say something. It's slowly becoming clear. Thank you to know that from Shipra. Thanks a lot. Great. Okay, as we get those feedbacks to come in, that's going to make some progress. So this is why the fourth is different from the third. So the technology is making more and more with human lives than ever. More and more. So from the time the internet was just a thing and the you know, the smartphones came in, electricity came in. Today, the fourth industrial revolution is, an, is a revolution in such a way that it's merging more and more with our lives than ever before. If some of you have heard and followed people like Elon Musk, they're even talking about how to put brain chips in the minds of people. And in, 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 in what is known as augment, augmented, this augmented intelligence. And you see, like I've already given some examples today, more and more are we using these technologies in our lives. Today, people are ordering food on their phones. Just recently, there was a campaign in Zambia, wash on your phone. Uh, people are spending more and more time on their phones than they are spending with people, social media. And this closeness, and this blurred line between technology and human lives is becoming more and more uh, evident. And another thing is that it's happening fast. <laughs> this is happening at a fast rate. I mean, the rate at which technology and human lives are becoming in sync is crazy. And this is some stats on that. It took 75 years for 100 million users to use the telephone. But in only two years, Instagram had 100 million users. That's fast, right? And Pokemon Go had 100 million users in just a month. These are insane numbers. It's way too fast. Yes, like Shishamba says, things are happening too fast. Now, let me, let me just move a bit away from this and just try to come down to something we can relate. Now, if this is happening so fast, do you feel it's normal for 
people to still be ignoring technology because if this is happening too fast, by 20 years from now, like 2040, do you know how much the world would have potentially changed? And if you're a person that is none the wiser concerning these technologies, do you really feel you'll be able to fit in? And that is why this should be a subject that we should be addressing as Zambians as well. Because there is so much happening. Today, people are, more, are getting more up-to-date news through social media platforms than they are getting from their tele-broadcasting uh, national channel. I mean, there's so much connectivity in those platforms that are coming in. I mean, there's places where you can actually, if you use a, uh, if like in China, there's WeShare. Now, we, it should be WeShare that allows you to pay through social media platforms. And this closeness of human lives to their technology is incorporated in this fourth industrial revolution. And at the end of this, like I promised, we're going to look at some technologies such as the, you know, AIs, the artificial intelligence and the machine learning and, and more that I'll, I'll just be able to unveil to you. I want to share those things. And these are what's causing this to happen faster and faster. Because like we know, machines and robots can do these things fast. Let me just drop a term here. Like I said, I'll be sharing some things on slide and some things off slide. I've always told you I can only cover enough within an hour. And if you want to know more of these things, you can always get in touch with us and make life. We love such things. And we can get, if you're interested in a particular area, you always get that and we can get to go deeper with you. But did you know that there's a term known as quantum computing? Quantum computing. Now, before I go to the next slide, what quantum computing is, is, okay, before I give that as an example, so that I can, I can show you a relationship. This is a relationship that's famous if you do your research around the same. Conventional computing is reading one book at a time in a library, for example. So if I'm using reading one book at a time, that's conventional computing. That's the rate at which things are moving and you're able to compute, get return data into information, et cetera, et cetera. Now, quantum computing in the same example is reading all the books of the library at once. That's quantum computing. Now, if quantum computing is something that is evident today's post industrial revolution, it means that problems can be solved faster. It means innovations are much more faster than they were many years ago. And it means problems to some of the deepest world's uh, needs are being solved faster because of things like quantum computing with the advent of things like big data where there's all our information in one place. So these are the kind of things that are causing people to use technologies every single day. I mean, today you see people posting how they were running and they were able to get a map of how far they ran. They ran 50 kilometers. They're able to get heart rate readings, you know, and all those information, that information is available on our fingertips. Now I'm gonna get into the better stuff, the sweet stuff and how this becomes relevant as an entrepreneur. So let's make some progress. So why do we need to embrace the fourth industrial revolution? If you came here tonight, I believe what I'm about to share with you may be jaw dropping or maybe the thing that will change your life. I've said this on this platform and I'll say it again. It just takes a moment for your life to change. Let me say that again. It only takes a moment for your life to change. Think about it. Many things about your life today may have been because of maybe what your high school teacher said about you and it gave you encouragement. It could have been because of a sermon you heard at church and it changed your life forever. So do not ever underestimate the opportunities that lie in moments because it may change your life. And I hope today this is going to give you a leap 
in your thinking process as an entrepreneur in a world where the fourth industrial revolution is here, whether we like it or not. So let me get to share this. Business investors, innovators, and shareholders benefit the most from innovation. Let me say that again. Business investors, innovators, and shareholders benefit the most from innovation. All this we're talking about tonight, the people who benefit the most from it are business investors. People like you and I, who are perhaps innovators in our businesses, who are shareholders of a startup, we get to benefit the most. And let me tell you why this is so. Already 47% of the world, <laughs> like economy is already run by people who have the money which is very, very, very sad in a way. And that's one of the problems that the Industrial Revolution is creating. It's creating more inequality. Now, it's what is known as the winner-takes-all economy. It means today it pays to have the money. It pays to be part of the people that are eating the cake. People like the Jeff Bezos, the, the, the Mark Zuckerbergs, you know, it said 1% of the world's fortune, uh, so 1% of the world's, uh, the people who got the most money in the world belong to the 1%. That is more than the entire world put together. They hold the most money, just 1%. Those are the billionaires. That's how much wealth we own. And it's a sad thing. And you can still see moments where people that have got innovations, get to the place where they become millionaires and potentially billionaires. See how Snapchat came from nowhere and was able to make money. You know, see how innovations like Zoom seem to have come from nowhere. And the person now is a multi-billionaire. Now, why is this the reason? It's because as these particular innovations and the fourth industrial revolution becomes more and more of lives, People with the billions are the ones backing it. Over 40% of the past uh, world's biggest innovation were backed by billionaires. Over 40%. Let me even put it in a more clear terms. Actually, it's way more. It's, the studies actually show that billionaires have driven 80% of the main innovations over the last 40 years. That's, that's how much billionaires are today. And if those of you have been following current affairs, you're going to notice that people like the people at Google, the CEO, and people like Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, have been being grilled by Congress because there is monopoly. It's a real issue today. And there's been consistent Congress uh, being done around this. And this, even though you like it or not, is true. And you stand a better chance when you are part of the winnings of new innovations and you are a shareholder in a startup that is pertaining to this to benefit. And that's one of the benefits for you. So I hope this is clear. Let me get to talk more into this tonight because if you miss this, then, then tonight wouldn't have been as effective. So let me, let me get more meat to this very, very thought here. So there are different types of people today in the economy. And these particular people that we have as a state case study right now, the business investors, people who will look at a startup that has got great potential and be the first to participate in the pre-seed round or the seed round. These people take a piece of the winnings when this blows up. The innovators are the people with the ideas, people coming up with new stuff in AI. Did you know that the a uh, number of patents that are linked to the fourth industrial revolution have been increasing over the past years, such that patents concerning things like 3D printing and AI have gone to 2.4 million by 2020. That's how many patents have been issued. So innovators are innovating more now with technologies in 
the lines of the fourth industrial revolution. AI technologies. I happen to be part of a SADIC innovation challenge competition that uh, our team at Make Life won. We were innovating in the, source, in the small and medium enterprise funding financing. And one of the things that we learned during those segments, segments and trainings as we went through that innovation, you know, that stuck with me was that there was a company uh, that is, it is South African based and they decided to create an AI uh, voice, uh, how can I put in AI voice personality, the way Siri is and whatnot that speaks in the local languages of the people in South Africa. And they have a name for that particular AI. So the way the Siri, there's Cortana, you know, and you're able to tell, hey Siri, play me this, where's the next restaurant? They decided to create in AI and artificial intelligence, voice recognizing, um, you know, uh, AI software that allows for people in their local language to get feedback. And that is something that gave them room in the economy. So they looked at a gap that wasn't being met. And I always tell entrepreneurs I interact with, look for the gaps. If you're looking for innovation, look for gaps. So they found that sweet spot and filled that gap. And guess what? It's done great things for them. Time is moving, so let me move on. We're supposed to be done by 2030. And we barely moved quite a great deal. So let me just make some progress. So the truth is that some roles are phasing off while new ones are being created. Every single day, there are jobs that are becoming more and more obsolete. I mean, people are replacing, I, I worked for Vodafone back in the days and uh, I happened to be a remote call center agent and I also uh, happened to be an on-site call center agent at some times, especially on times when I didn't have much to do, I would go there and do some overnight. So I, I know how to talk to people. I know how to do those voice to say, hi, thank you for calling Vodafone Zambia. We're happy to serve you. All those things people around you through have done that as well. And some of you may have also had that history in your life. But guess what? One of the things that uh, have happened with machine learning and AI technology is coming up. One of the most heavy road back um, uh, uh, jobs has been call centers. They are reducing the sizes of call centers by the numbers. I mean, call centers are reducing. People are not requiring so many people to work in their call centers. In America, they're already replacing people like the pizza guy. We've never really had much of that here. We just have uh, the bikers that deliver our pizza. Well, they're also the pizza delivery people. And because we are, we are behind in technology for some of these things, we don't have drones that are doing that yet. And obviously around drones, there's normally regulation. It also is out there in the Western world. But those guys have gone through that to create rover drones that drive to your place so that they combat the whole unmanned uh, regulations around how high they should fly, which areas they can fly, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing is, these jobs are changing. There is a company in the US called Zipkira that signed a contract where they uh, replaced some people in the law firm with AI technologies to do due diligence. It's one of the hottest topics in laws. And they replaced it, they signed, this, they signed agreement with artificial intelligence companies and replaced certain lawyers, those guys who work as um, people who get information for the law firms. Even law is being affected. Today, maybe years from now, you, you have a lawyer representing your case. <laughs> it may happen one day, you know, and where they just go ahead and they study all about your crime scene. And, you know, I'm, I'm, my background is in engineering. So one of the things that we've done is looking at what is known as a 3D scanner. Now, a 3D scanner can scan an entire place and get forensic evidence in that environment. And it can re, it will give you a picture, it can rebuild a scenario. Now, when you see it scans that area and using technologies, yes, software, it has to work in hand, you can rebuild scenarios. Now, that could be where the future may take us. It's 
sound a bit scary. Yes, but it's going to happen. Most likely. So now, if jobs are finishing, they are becoming obsolete faster and faster. It means new job creations are coming forth. The challenge is that even when the new job opportunities are coming up, there are very few competence programs that training in these new skills. That is why the first point Excuse me, sorry, uh, I got disconnected for a moment. Um, I hope I'm audible again. I, my, my network here just, just decided to log me out. Uh, but I hope that won't happen again. Thank you for that confirmation. I hope we will have uh, a smooth running through and through. So that's about how roads are being consistently phased off today. So it's not too safe to only have a job today. People are being replaced in the numbers. Okay, I can go on and on, like I've said, about how many more jobs are being re are irrelevant today. So to do that, let me make some more progress. So this is how jobs are changing. Industrial jobs are being changed. Now seeing how there's machines that are now used in industries and these machines can carry loads, even big loads, to different places. Amazon is using technologies in, in tractors that don't need people to drive them. Autonomous drivers. This is self-driving technology. That is, if people order stuff at shipping docks and they don't need people anymore to carry that. Now, do you know how many people make a living based on transportation? and the ability to transfer something from one place to another. So how many jobs are being back road because of technology such as robotics, machine learning, that are coming in and replacing the people in the industries? It's very, very dangerous right now. It's, it's alarming. And professional jobs, I just told you about how lawyers are being replaced. Guess what? Accountants are being replaced. There are platforms where you get uh, things like Quick App. You're going to have all these particular applications that can do base accounting for you faster. When I talk about technology, this is what I, I feel technology does. Technology helps us give our level of genius to a machine that can amplify it and give it to another person. That's the way I see technology. And I'll be giving a talk next week on the, at the Lusaka Startup Week. Uh, that's going to be happening online. And, and before we end this, Aaron's going to share a link, and he can share it with you now. And I'll be able just to talk about it at the end. And you should go ahead and sign up. And one of the things is that we are seeing how technologies are making things easier for the people who are using them, but they're also taking away jobs. So as a techno entrepreneur, your life becomes easier. Like 
you don't need to know how to build an entire website. Actually, you don't even need to learn how to code to build a website today. There are technologies that have, are codeless technologies that help you build applications, websites today. Why? Because someone used their genius and they were able to back code and all you now need is a drag and drop editor. All you just need now is to be able to pin uh, puzzles together. And you see with that happening today, jobs are on the risk, but entrepreneurs are able to produce things more today. One of the biggest economic impacts of the fourth industrial revolution is this, and watch this. It's that output has increased. What do I mean by this? I mean that if you've done economics before, there should be the production frontier, something like that, to be production, PPF, uh, the word has run out of my mind, I wanna remember it. This is where you're able to see how production is phasing off based on the available resources. Now, with the advent of the industrial revolution, output is huge. Before that, people used to be the ones in factories. They could only produce 20 cars, 30 cars. But with robotics in factories, today if one factory can produce 100 to 1,000 vehicles in one day, those are insane numbers. Today with technology, you can do a whole lot more with a whole lot less. This is the second impact on economy. Prices are falling because today what could be done, for example, what could have been taken long to do because someone had to stitch clothes hand by hand. Machines are doing clothes so fast. Chinese factories can print, can not print, can make fabric so fast. So meaning there's an abundance in the economy based on this technology that's happening. So the output is rising. If I was to show you graphs, you're going to see that the graphs of production are going high. GDPs are rising. Why? There's so many goods and services being produced. Why? With this quantum computing and going on, things happen fast. Now that shows you how, again, the entrepreneur, if you position yourself well, you are going to be able to produce. But if you just stick within a job, you are also being replaced fast. I showed you how fast things are happening. Pokemon go two months, 10 million users. That's how fast people are being replaced as well today. With that, actually, there was a company called Foxconn in China that does Apple phones. They announced they were replacing 60,000 workers with robots to be able to put those phones together. 60,000 people lost jobs overnight, people. Why? Because they brought in technologies. That's scary. When I think about this, I'm now thinking, well, at least if you're not going to get into direct entrepreneurship, be an investor, you know, be an innovator, have the ideas, find a way to secure some equity and let other people run with it. But do not just depend on a job. Things are going. Entertainment jobs are being replaced. On, on, on Spotify, which is a music app, there is an AI. Should be the, the name is something like, is it Elizabeth How, How Well? That produces music. And it's got following musicians. So it produces music. Beats today are being made by machines with machine learning that now producing new sounds. So even musicians are at risk. At some point they'll say, I don't, actually it's already happening. Some people don't need a guitar person. They don't need a, a keyboard person. They don't need a piano person. They just need a software and guess what? They have all the musicians playing. That's crazy, right? And that's the truth. Services are being replaced by computers to a great level. So please be, let me go back to that slide. Business investors, innovators, and shareholders benefit the most. If you're not doing any of those, you are in danger. Let me share the last things. These are some of the technologies and we be done. If you do not know about any of these, I'm gonna give you a challenge tonight. Start reading on robotics, start reading on big data, Start reading on AI, which is artificial intelligence. 
start learning about machine learning, blockchain technology, cloud computing, which is done by Google, so there's a cloud storage, cloud computing, understand these terms. I'm not saying that you get involved in all of them because that would just be insane. But I'm trying to tell you to say, be aware of them and see how you can benefit from them. The fourth industrial revolution is here. The last ones again are these more. Be aware of digital sales, you know, even get a certificate of, uh, on Google for this. Uh, which is free. Uh, augmented intelligence. This is what I told you where there's a, a combination between a combination between augmented or between human beings and AI. It's known as augmented intelligence. Driverless cars. IoT, which means the internet of things. Kishiba says, repeat the slide again. Let me go back to the slide. Please, if you to get a screen capture of this, take it now. I wish I had time, I would start telling you about robotics, big data, AI, but I love to respect time. But these are things I'm challenging you to read them. If you want us to have a chat, please engage with the groups. Right now, uh, Aaron is gonna share with you. I hope you've taken notes of this. Aaron has already shared a link for you to register for that Osaka Startup Week. I'm only gonna do on Thursday, 18.45 and what? Aaron is also speaking at that. I'm gonna go back to the slides. So this is the Lusaka Startup Week. I'm in the fourth industrial revolution. There are many speakers on these platforms. Uh, Make Life International happens to be one of those companies that are part and parcel of bringing this to be. And I'm speaking, I'll be speaking on Thursday in particular uh, from 1845. So you can catch me on that panel. Aaron will be speaking on Tuesday. You should catch him. Aaron is the founder of Unzapreneurs and Eska Arts. He'll be speaking even in line with finance and they'll definitely, I believe they'll get into things like fintech, which is something that's relevant today, which is financial technologies. So the Google form was already sent. Those of you not part of the Unzapreneurs WhatsApp group, this is where we're going to put the recording for this session. So make sure that you join that WhatsApp group that's been posted. If you want to benefit, it's open to all people. And yes, if you want to ask questions with that, if you want to get in touch with me, those are my contact details, info at makelivein, mapala at makelivein.com. That's the number for Make Live International. You can get in touch with us. They will let me know that you are in touch. And so let me go back to those slides. I know that some of you want to see that. So make sure you get a copy of this. Find out about driverless cars. Even Uber already wrote out some of these. There's actually driverless trucks that are transporting stuff today in the world, but let me say this, in the world, and it's real. So are there any questions? I'm going to hand over to Mondoka to just quickly ask, see if there's any questions. It wouldn't be nice. I know time is up, but it wouldn't be nice to just close these sessions. I'll be depriving people who may have real questions around this. So I'm going to allow Mondoka to just take over now and, and be able to guide that. Okay, let me just unmute you, Mondoka. Uh, so that you can be able to interact. 